Let's see. All right, understanding. So we've got Sayori and Yuri, it looks like. So let's go ahead and let's just uh, start that one up. Just explode. I guess this is just gonna be like how the girls, you know, meet, you know, how, how they become friends. Like how these four girls become like friends or whatever. I'm so interested in Natsuki and Yuri's, so hang on, wait. Yeah, okay, just need to make sure. All right. Oh, fuck, I forgot to turn off the music. Shh, Doki Doki's on. You are not, you are not playing currently. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door, causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. Okay, so it is like, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So this is like, like, I'm glad I unlocked them all then, because this is gonna be like in, I guess, chronological order is the word I'm looking for. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Yuri! Sarah's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She's very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her! It's a girl! It's true. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had cut him across reading alone in a classroom. Hello, music. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Sarah continues to fail to containing her excitement. It's happening! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for coming! Sorry it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori, and we run the Literature Club. Even though it's just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I mean, I should be good enough. <laughs> Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh, um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So, what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori, and this is Monica. Sayori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like, books? We're... Shit, we're losing her! <laughs> we're losing her, guys! Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy's cool. Yes, have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? Uh, I can't say that I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book, and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her chest in joy. You can borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um, Monica stammers, caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. <laughs> she glances sideways at Sayori, silently asking for help. I'd love to. Sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Uh, you probably only need to bring one for now. Sarah nervously says that note to herself, the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri sets down on the desk. True. Okay. I'll go get the first one, then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. So she- her thing with the literature club is she probably just wants somebody to share her books with. Which, same, nothing is shittier than going through a book series and nobody has fucking read it. Because nobody reads fantasy books anymore. That was literally me recently with the Maze Runner. I was like, damn, nobody else reads this goddamn book. Like, same with like, I know this is probably gonna be, but I used to like read the Mortal Instruments and I was the only one who read it. And I was like, okay, this is trash, but like, this is like novella trash. And so I kind of like dig it, but nobody else read it. So I feel Yuri on this level. I'm just wanting somebody uh, who's read the books to talk with her on it. Like, I literally gave my brother the Maze Runner book after he said he watched the movie and liked it. And he just never touched it. And it makes me sad. 
So, so I feel that desperately, like, trying to find somebody else who, like, reads novels. Like, I, I feel that. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with fantasy, except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid. That's probably, like, a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. Ah, what the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You're, you'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her? Yay! That's exactly what I want to do. Besides, Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her finger against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to re <laughs> reveal Yuri's return. I'm back. That is the other thing with novels, though, is I... Oof, it, it's a lot of time. I get it. It's It takes a lot to just sit and read something. What I used to do with my friend who would read stuff with me, though, is, like, we would read together. And, like, we would just say, like... If she finished the chapter before me, she'd be like, okay, I'm done. And then whenever I would finish a chapter, she'd be like, I'd be like, okay, I'm done. And we'd talk about the chapter and, like, what we thought of it and, like, exploding and just, like, that. that's, like, how we would get through stuff, uh, like, novels. But, you know, it's it's one of those things where we're getting, like, to the point, like, I'm getting to the point in age where it's kind of hard to find time to just sit with, you know, my friends because, you know, they have their hours that they work and I have my hours and it's it's kind of hard to find time to just sit and pick up like a, a book so god i miss i miss not having any responsibilities her breath is slightly heavy which combined with her short time gone indicates she may have ran at least part of the way she makes her way back over to sayori and sets the book down on her desk just as sayori feared the book yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one already on yuri's desk well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it, yo. She's the super fan. There are some things that are more explained in other books that you take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um, Sarah nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today we should just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think, like, if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sayori while Yuri isn't looking. Oh. Okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. God. When the fandoms you're in are your entire personality. I went through a phase like that in high school, so I, I feel that. <laughs> when literally, like, I was, I, that was literally me. I went through that phase. It's like my entire personality trait were the games I was playing. The anime I was watching and the man the manga and books I was reading. That was like it. That was my entire personality. I could talk forever about those things, but if you wanted to talk with me about anything else, crickets. <laughs> so I did have a phase like that in high school. <laughs> in middle school. So what made you decide you wanted to join the club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea that someone was start starting a literature club, but that's my fault since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements. I only found out because she... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica? M Monica came to my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly Yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid, I got too nervous and couldn't even look up, so she just walked out. It took me several days to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided that was probably irrational. Wait, no, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. 
I was actually really hoping that you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the, as the worst possible scenario. Girl, me too. <laughs> well, I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons too, such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Oh, that makes me happy. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are in the same, th the same things I am, except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kinds of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. Sarah pauses, a look of concern on her face. How about you tell me about something I- How about I tell you something I'm into, and then you can tell me about something you're into? I suppose that would be okay. Okay, well, I'm pretty into, like, crafty things. Like making cute little collages, or decorating things like cards or jewelry boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off till the last minute. <laughs> so yeah, that's something I'm kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much, it's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Sayori nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature! Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. No, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. I'm not. Oh, yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as vice president of the literature club. Monica's like, nah, you're staying with me now, bitch. There, now you're stuck with me. Hey, uh, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after having got cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. It's peaceful. It's nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate automatically for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I... Damn it. <laughs> oh, I can't, like, actually... Whenever I feel like I need it. Okay. Wow, I feel like I would never have time to do something like that. I found that we have a lot of more time than we think we do, if you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continued their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So, are you two going to be starting on the book the next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. Sayori beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Now the question is, is Sayori going to actually read it? I feel like either Sayori is going to forget to read it, or she's not going to be as far along as Yuri wants her to be. I feel like this either of these two ways it's going to lead to a misunderstanding and that maybe Yuri, that Sayori doesn't like her book. And it's going to lead to some conflict. And then we're going to have some reconciliation near the end. Possibly revolving around how um, Yuri, like, comes to the worst possible conclusions whenever, you know, something doesn't go as planned. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left to the club room. Sayori, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything, I just talked. Still, besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I could put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. 
After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. Oh god, or Sayori doesn't like the book. Shit. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again! Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us two gay. Is that okay? Yuri silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? Sayori so tilts her head, unsure of exactly what Yuri's talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overly excited to share my books, and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. I was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still. I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Well, huh? why? Because I know that you are just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. These girls are just going to come for my entire emotional bag, aren't they? I can't. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well, the thing is, we don't even have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun we could do together, reading your books. You know, like a club activity. That'd be okay, right? Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place. And you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Sayori pulls up her desk against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Sayori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Part of the Everlast Saga. Aw, it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle! Sayori's too precious for this earth. Sorry, I'm ready now. Oh, right. I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh, it's useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees. Or just for- she's literally me. She's a lore whore. She's a lore whore. I'm a lore whore. <laughs> I cannot- Notes? Uh, I mean, uh, yes, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it'll be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Sayori's like, fuck, what did I get myself into? Literally. Anyone, <laughs> this is literally me with anybody who's not really into the thing that I'm into, but is willing to listen. I'm like, let me just pull out my, my, my 30 page word document of like timelines, <laughs> of like timelines and themes and like possible things that could happen, things that definitely won't happen. Uh, because of, like, uh, things already in the narrative. Like, just, let me just pull everything out. <laughs> Sari's joke flew completely over Yuri's head. But thinking about it, she decides that it's probably for the best that it did. <laughs> hey there, Cheerio. Well, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you, you're, like, super smart. Oh, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here thus far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No! Sarah rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. Aww. <laughs> anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After a minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. 
Yuri begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. But despite Sayori's expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way of such that it's fun to follow along. It becomes evident that the world-building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is the one that Yuri finds her passions leaning towards. Me! 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 I... I love literary analysis. It's like one of the few things that can be considered intellectual in this day and age that like I'm super passionate about. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Oh, I like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are like just putting down my feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry. I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way! <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Sayori's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri's laugh. Me! Oh, I'm gonna- but I can't. I feel like the only person I'm not gonna be able to relate too much is Natsuki, aside from the fact that I'm obsessed with anime and manga still. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Patience of a saint. Hmm, I see. Sorry, John's Yuri is patient into her notes. Hey, that's for the book. I'm just kidding. But I'm kind of glad you're patient because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Me. <laughs> How many times am I going to say me going through this goddamn side story? <laughs> Sorry, I flips through the few pages of the book that get past the table of contents. <laughs> Hey there, Henry. Okay, chapter one. The room begins becomes silent as the two of them begin to read, but the silence only lasts for a, mo a moment before Sayori speaks up again. What is vindicated? <laughs> vindicated. I am selfish. I am wrong. I am right. I swear I'm right. I swear I knew it all along and I am fine. Okay. Uh, the high, high school just came back to me. That's an old <laughs> song. Every time Sayori says something, me. Uh, well, in this context, it essentially means. Ah! Needs more spoon. <laughs> Miss, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Thank you so much for supporting the fam. It's good to have you with us here today. Thanks for spicing things up with a, a small scare. Yeah, I don't think these side stories are going to have any horror elements, but I'm really glad that we're going through it, just because um, it's genuinely been, like, the most well-written part of the game so far, is these side stories, which I appreciate, considering this is what's behind the paywall, but, yeah. In this content, it, context, it extends... In this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. Vindic vindicated means you are freed from some sort of thing that's binding you. And it's like, in a relieving way. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Sayori turns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm, a lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanations to be understood. Oh, the two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile... Uh, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Until now, their expressions had been reversed, so Sayori is easily navigating social situations and Yuri is struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are descri describing a flashback that Barnes is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in these notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often and even adding to them. But her rejection in questions comes from her getting used to not comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. Me. 
At last, Sarah reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sayori takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gone through so far. So what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayori tries to find the words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? Huh? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and keep doing my best so I can see the way you do. That was the wrong thing to say because, like, that is genuinely the wrong thing to say when someone's trying to get, like, you into something because that means that you're not doing it. You're not watching it for, like, because you like it. You're doing it for this other person. I, I get that way, too. I feel that, Yuri. I feel that. Like, whenever I go, so how did, what did you think? And somebody, like, gives me, like, a sort of lukewarm response or like just a uh, I mean I'll go through it with you if you want me to it's like I just I'm just like nah it's fine we'll find something else like I just fucking just say fuck it <laughs> the relaxation in Yuri's expression fades I see Yuri quietly gathers, gathers her things we can continue tomorrow right Yuri pauses and shakes her head we can do something else tomorrow I it's actually me <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Ah, uh, fuck! Okay, I don't react like that, but, like, I, I feel that. <laughs> but Jesus, Yuri, no, wait! <laughs> Yuri! Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. So Yuri's left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. Yeah, I used to get really upset like that. Not anymore, but I have to remember that this is high school. So I have to put myself in a high school mindset. But yeah, like, nowadays I'm just like, it's fine. We'll just find something. <laughs> we'll just find something else. There's so much, there's so much shit around. Like, we'll just find something else to, like, do together. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her I enjoyed it. No, Sai. Well, I can't say that I'm not guilty of doing that. So, Monica trusted me with this. No, Sayori. No. It's the only thing I'm good at, and I still messed it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? Oh my God, no, no, Sayori, don't go down that path, girl. You start thinking like that, you're just gonna keep going down that path. Don't do it to yourself. Drowned in guilt, Sayori stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Ah, oh, this is horrible! Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. Sayori, don't be like that. It's just, oh my god. Sayori's like, ugh. Sayori's just coming for my emotional everything. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. See, as an outside party, like, it's easy to tell, like, what's actually going on. But, like, when you hear their inner monologue, it's like, I've been there. <laughs> like, I feel like everybody's been there where they're like, well, I've fucked up. Yeah. I'm sure if I was smarter, she would be having more, so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Ooh. So let's go ahead and let's get into understanding, and let's just let's let's just do the thing and make sight. Oh shit, I forgot the music again. Shh. For the first time, Sayori is the first to enter the club room. Uh. Oh, hang on. Did I hit the thing. Okay, I did. I dead ass thought that I didn't also hit the record button so that way I can put it on YouTube because that's what we're doing. I'm actually using my YouTube 
uh, to archive things just in case something goes awry on Twitch. And I was like, wait, I need to record this so it's easier. For the first time, Sayori is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at the desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always it's just a disappointment. Sayori continues to wrestle with her self-depreciating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those students with their work? It's a pushover sometimes. It's gonna leave such a bad impression on newcomer members like Yuri if I'm not the first one here. Monica rounds the corner, approaching the club room. As she does so, Yuri? Uh, Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room's always open. It's not, Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window and then looks away. Actually, I was just, I was just wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With the club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica's utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club, club room to see herself, herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay, it's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica's worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have even arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so com conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. I just have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around the billboards and replace the old ones with new ones. Yuri gnaws and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up the sh stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Uh, sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Oh, Sayori told me. What did you, the two of you end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Well, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing it on her. Yuri falls silent again as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Well, I'm thinking... A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I wouldn't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club, it's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Ah. Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club, hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests with everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people. Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversations about an arbitrary topic? 
I can talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. Same. <laughs> but for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. For me, that's not as hard. I feel like a lot of the times... See, I'm not... I used to be really bad at it. But nowadays, I'm not bad at saying... I don't know if I would be into something, but I think that the important thing is showing an effort at first. Like, even if you feel like you might not be into it, like, I still try. Like, I'll, I'll still go and I'll give it a good shot. And if I've really given it my all and it's just not clicking with me or not resonating with me, I feel like it's only honest to just say, mm, it's not for me. Um, and I feel like you know, I, I feel like that's okay. I feel like it's okay to try new things. And, like, even if you feel like you might not like them or try new things. And then, you know, find out that you do like them because that can also happen. So, I definitely feel where Yuri is coming from. Um, but if it's something else and I don't know what to say, I usually ask the person what they like about it. Like, you know, get them talking about the thing that they want to talk about so that way I can understand where they're coming from and, you know, further figure out if it would be something I would be into. Uh, so I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She, what? Hold on, you're saying that Sayori is taking pity on you. Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or you don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with whatever I pushed on to her. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because, because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. See, that's where poor Yuri, poor Yuri, like, and Jay, I, I feel like that sometimes, not to this extent, definitely, but like, I like to give myself the idea that they're trying to get into it because it's something that they want to share with me and vice versa. It's like, I want to get into something, maybe not because I had an interest to it to begin with, but because it's something that it could be like, I might end up really liking and then it's something that we can share together. So, over the years, like, I've just genuinely learned that. So, it feels kind of sad to see Yuri kind of, you know, taking it that way. <laughs> it's the worst feeling. I hate it. Yuri's sharp words cut through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stopped short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down, with her fists clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I can never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. Sayori's different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has only one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? So reciprocate! Maybe write her a poem. I don't know. Like, see if you like poetry. I just... Yuri. <laughs> Relationships are a two-way street. If you feel like they're putting in a lot of work and they're, you know, really trying to get into your interests, then try to get into their interests, too. Like, ah! <laughs> Scream. I'm sorry I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be better better be able to say better. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive in her kindness, further exasperating the matter. That's me. Sayori is, like, actually me in an anime character, and I'm gonna freaking die. I know people are gonna say that. Like, they say that all the time, but it's almost scary how accurate... Like, that is, like, I have so much difficulty with people who, like, have a hard time opening up or accepting, like, that. 
because then I feel like, oh my god, I'm pushing too much. Like, I'm doing, like, all these things, and it's, like, horrible. Like, uh, the, I feel that. Ugh. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sorry wants to be your friend. I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori, she has her own needs, too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. Yes! Okay, and Mon okay. Monica, Monica's good at, like, being a mediator. That's good. It's too bad she turns into a grade-A bitch in the real game. No. <laughs> you just have to be have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. My head is just... It's so resistant to everything. I'm... I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of the cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. No, Yuri, let Sayori love you. <laughs> let Sayori give you hugs. <laughs> Ugh. Like, if a friend told me that, I feel like I would just, like, uh, no. I feel like I would just, like, latch on and be like, no, come to me. <laughs> like, like that's so cathartic. <laughs> that would be so cathartic. Mm, I feel like I know where this is going, and it's really precious. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session. But I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. You're totally fine. That's for the club, remember? You're just helping make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. This, this kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Meanwhile, Sayori's probably in her own head thinking, wow, I fucked up. How do you fuck up this bad? More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Will Gary followed along. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? can take a walk. I want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. I like to make my own though, so please don't worry about it. Although I suppose it's one of the downsides of reading here in the club. Rather than at home, I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for the tea in the club room. You can use like an electric kettle to heat up the water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think that would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about the tea is enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. Yuri? Wait, hold on, I'm not done yet! Yuri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, um. Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At the moment, she realizes how Sayori had been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come in today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through the next chapter first. But I mostly got, but I got most of the way through it. And look! Sayori holds up the sheets of paper. It's a page of notes beautifully produced with indentations, categories, and even color coding. <laughs> Sayori! actually me when I'm trying to impress somebody. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. I'm gonna cry. Stop. Yuri presses her fist again on her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? 
Sari's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. Oh! This game! It's not allowed to make me cry every chapter. I'm gonna fucking die. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sayuri looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand. So if I do something wrong, please tell me. Fuck. <laughs> My eyeliner! <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't think this, if you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like, I don't want your pity. Oof. 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 Yuri, yeah, we need to work on those social skills, girl. Why did I do that? Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard just to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? We're friends here. <laughs> I perish. Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Sayori or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here before Monica sees her like this and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. Before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. Boobs. Okay. Aww. It's okay, Sayori whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to, uh, unable to protest or pull away from Sayori's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavy through clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from how the things of uh, from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. Uh, Sayori's too beautiful for this earth. I promise. I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings. And we'll talk about them together. Okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods. <laughs> Odd time to be practicing the Heimlich maneuver, but alright. Yeah, I was gonna say, you need to- don't squeeze too hard. She's gonna upchuck her lunch. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think, I think I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people, so it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sayori doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought that it was finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. How am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Sayori, who can feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Well, my heart is now brokey brokey. <laughs> Oof. Thank you for helping me understand you a little bit better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with things that you need to. But 
I feel like it would just be frustrating you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid you would get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. I just can't. Oh my god. Yeah, I know, but my irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know, there's no way that you could frustrate me. Because I already like you as the person that you are. Ugh! <laughs> I know you said you have a hard time believing that, but I promise it's true. Sorry, yeah, Sayori, you better be careful. You, like, actually don't know where Yuri <laughs> might have a knife. <laughs> like, on her. Like, I'm not saying she'd use it, but you don't want to cut yourself on accident, because that would make this moment really awkward. You don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club. <laughs> but it's the best part of that... But it's the best part that we're all different. And have different interests. Like about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. I promise it's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but I but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? Yeah! So you're already literally my mindset. I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that. But I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about you. Why is Sayori me? I literally just said this. I literally just said this. Oh my god. I hate saying that because I feel like it's like I might be projecting onto a character, but it's like I feel like ag. Plus, you like super duper smart, and I want that to run off on me. <laughs> Yuri fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. Just like I'm an asshole, and people seem to enjoy my company for some reason. Oof. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Hmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening rather than worrying too much about saying the right thing. Sayori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if the literature club can make that happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Well then... Based on my understanding of your feeling, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything this early on, though, so we just see what happens. Oh, and, um, it's not good to touch people without their consent first. <laughs> She's like, I appreciate the hug, but next time. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. Yeah, she's like, I have a knife. I would have just, I would have just gone off. It's fine. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you in like, at all recently. So your roll trots over to Monica. Uh, she whispered loudly. Can I hug you? Ah, uh, sure, Sayori. Sayori wraps her arms around Monica. Oh yeah, Yuri, it might be good to know. Sayori can be kind of a hug monster. Ah, uh, you don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it could spell disaster. <laughs> Yuri laughs. Monica perplexedly looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad that you've been enjoying your reading so far. 
It's like our first real activity is the literature club. Uh, about that. Well, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me to not return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. Ah, <laughs> oh, we got a new mail. Oh my god. Okay, who's responsible for creating a Twitter account for Monica? I think it's hilarious, but for God's sake, don't tell Paula. Ha ha ha. I'll get 404. It would get 404 in a microsecond. Are you just relaying her tweets manually, or did you code some kind of pass through layer to automate it? Based on the contents of the tweets, e.g., not screaming for help, I assume they're coming from the control simulation? <laughs> oh, I am perished. No. Okay, so I didn't actually take, like, a proper break last time, so I'm gonna take a proper break, like, now. 